Stripe is one of the most popular online payment systems available. We'll show you how to add Stripe into your .NET project so you can start accepting online payments. This is our product page. This allows the user to buy products that we're selling. We're selling wireless headphones. We have an input text box that allows the user to input their email address. And we've also got a buy button. Notice that the buy button has a data hyphen buy attribute. This page also references a stripe.js file. This is the stripe.js JavaScript file. We're querying the data hyphen buy attribute and adding a click event listener. Assuming the data hyphen buy attribute has a value, we're going to store it as a number. If it's not a number, we're going to throw an exception. Otherwise, we're going to get the parent node from the event target so we can get the value from the email text box. That's this value here. Then we're going to use the JavaScript fetch API. We're going to make a call to slash API slash Stripe using the post method. And as part of the body, we're going to add the product ID and the email. Assuming we get a successful response, we're going to get the JSON. We're going to get the redirect URL and redirect the user to that particular URL. Finally, we have the confirmation page. This is where the user will be redirected to should they make a successful payment. It just states that we have received their order. We set this up as an ASP.NET Core Web API. To ensure that we can load static files, we needed to add these two lines to the program.cs file. Time to set up our Web API endpoint. This is where we'll make the call to Stripe and redirect the user so they can accept their online payments. So in controllers, we're going to add a new controller. We'll select API empty. And we're going to call it Stripe controller. We've created a product model class and this contains properties about the product such as the name and the price. We're going to add a default product into our Web API controller. Normally you do this for a database. We'll give it an ID of one. For the name, if we go onto the product page, we're going to copy the name and paste it in there. We'll do the same for the price as well. Now the ID of one, this represents the value in the data hyphen buy attribute. We've also set up a buy model class. This contains values from the request body, such as the product ID and the email. We've added data annotations as well, so we can validate them. We're now going to set up our web API endpoint. To do that, we're going to mark it with a HTTP post attribute. And we're going to return a type of task I action result. We're going to call it buy async. And we're going to pass in that model as a parameter. And for now, we're just going to return OK. So this will represent the API endpoint that is here. Before you can add Stripe to your .NET project, you need to sign up for an account so you can get an API key. You'll need to fill out some details, verify your email address, and go through some additional steps to activate payments on your account. There is a video in the YouTube description to show you how to do this. Once you've created your Stripe account, you'll need to log into it. Ensure that test mode is switched on because we don't want real payments taking place at this stage. Go to Developers, then go to the API Keys tab. You'll need the secret key. Reveal the test key. Click on it to copy it. Back to the .NET project, you'll need to paste the Stripe API key into the appsettings.development.json file. Add a Stripe API key into it and just paste the value in there. The API key is added to the Stripe Options class that we've created. To use it as options, we need to add it to the program.cs. To do that, we call builder.services, add options. We'll add in our class of Stripe options. And then we'll bind it to the configuration. So we call bind builder.configuration, get section, Stripe. That means we can inject the Stripe options as part of dependency injection. To do that, we wrap the Stripe options around the I option snapshot as a generic type, and we just pass in the value as part of a private read-only field. Stripe has extensive API documentation, allowing you to do many things. It also has a number of client libraries, including .NET. We're going to add the Stripe NuGet package to our project. To do that, we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We'll click on the Browse tab, and we'll do a search for Stripe.net. We'll select it into our project, and that will be installed. We're now ready to write our endpoint to redirect the user to Stripe. 
First, we're going to ensure that the model state is valid. If it's not, we're going to return a bad request. Then we're going to ensure that the product ID represents the same ID in the default product, which is the field up here. Assuming everything's fine with that, we're going to store the product as the default product. We're also going to get the origin of the project. And we'll need this for the redirect URLs. So we do that by calling request.scheme colon slash slash and then the host. So it's request.host. Next, we need to get the API key and store it into a static class called stripe.configuration. We need to get the API key property and we get the value from stripe options.api key. So that's the value that we're passing in as part of the Pensy injection. We also need to create a new Stripe session service. So to do that, we call the new instance of the session service. Now the namespace for this is stripe.checkout. There are already many instances of the session service, so make sure you're using that one. We then need to create a session with Stripe. To do that, we call the Stripe session service, and within that, we've got a create async method that we need to call. We create a new session create options, and we need to set some of the properties. For the mode, we're going to set as payment, the client reference ID, we're going to just create a new guild and convert it into a string. The success URL, we're going to get the origin and then we're going to point it to our confirmation page. That's confirmation.html. We're going to do the same with the cancel as well, but we're going to redirect the user back to the listing page, which is index.html. Now we've got the origin because that's the origin of our project. And customer email, we get that from the body that we're passing in. So it's the buy model dot email. Then we need to set the line items. Now we need to create a couple of new instances here. And then we need to set some price data. So for the currency, we're going to set as US dollars. The product data, we need to create a new instance of that. And we're going to store the product name as product.name. And we're going to set the unit amount decimal. And to do this, we get the price, but it needs to be a whole number. So we need to times it by 100. We also need to set the quantity as one. Now, finally, we need to add the redirect URL as part of the response. So to do that, we declare the redirect URL and we're going to get the Stripe checkout session and we can just call the URL property from it. Time to demo it. We've added an email address, clicking on the buy button redirects us to the Stripe page. We're adding a test card number. The expiry date needs to be in the future. The CVC, we can add anything. Cardholder name, we can add anything as well. And the same with the postcode. That's been successful and that redirects us to our confirmation page. When you're ready to accept live payments, ensure that test mode is switched off and you'll need to get a separate API key. Go to API keys and copy the secret key. We also looked at how to add configuration values to your .NET project. Watch this video next, where I'll show you how to read configuration values from appsettings.json. And if you want to download the code example for this tutorial, you can go to roundthecode.com examples. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.